Thiago. Of course, my dear. Oh, oh my God, no. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for answering my questions and talking to me. Everybody, We're here doing with my friend Vuyoka. On two phones, on Thiago's phone yes, and on my phone. Yes, on two phones. Let me just... So we're going to talk some art today. Yes, we're going to talk Hello. some art. So as you know, Thiago is an amazing painter and a friend of mine. Yay. So let's <laughs> talk about... Thanks. Yes, let's talk about our so first, lives. So people know more about you. Where are you from? Oh, I'm from the Azores Islands. So I was born in the Azores and uh, I was very influenced by all of that environment. Because as you know, the Azores are the islands in the middle of the Atlantic. So it has kind of a mystique to it. It has a lot of fog. It has a lot of uh, environmental differences. And uh, that really influenced me. And if you see in other artists in the Azores, we are really passionate about fantasy and oh, about really? the mystic. That yes, that's uh, that's actually true. Because you true. live in those islands with a lot of fogs and there's a with lot of, a lot of creatures. Fogs. And, it's, and it's like fairies live there. So it's really interesting. And uh, I really uh, I really love going there. I get really inspired and it's really interesting. So I came from the Azores and then I went to study at continental Portugal. And uh, in Portugal, I studied architecture and became an architect, but my real passion was always art. And then later in life, I decided to become a full-time artist, and it's been the best time in my life. <laughs> so when did you start drawing? Oh, I start drawing about when I was a child. I remember my drawings. I still have them. I still have them. My mother collected all of my drawings, and I still have them in a big pile. So what happens when I look at them? I have my childhood the... drawings too Yay. in a small pile, but I bet it's not as good as yours. Oh, I'm sure they're amazing. I'm sure everybody has their drawings. <laughs> I'm sure they're amazing. Oh, let me wave back at all of you. Yeah, and uh, it's it's really interesting because I look back at them and even the hey Dave, uh, how are you doing, Dave? So even though they're not uh, as uh, advanced with the technique as they are now, the themes are quite the same. So it was always fantasy. For you? It was always fantasy. So it tell was me about always one of your genius. childhood uh, paintings. Oh, my childhood paintings. It would always be like castles, fairies. Queens, kings, and all of that. Dragons. <laughs> it would always be something like that. I Mermaids. Would love to see, actually, I think yes. you should take photos. I need photos to bring them. I need to. I need to bring them back to New York so that I can actually take pictures and post and it all over. It yeah. Maybe to exhibit. <laughs> yes, yes. To exhibit. That would be awesome. A As a childhood, that would be awesome. <laughs> Okay, so I know later on you moved to Germany. So what made you move to Germany from yes, Portugal? Yes, because I was an architect uh, back at the time. And uh, Portugal, around 2008, started having a big economical crisis. So it was a very difficult life in Portugal back at that time. And even though I still had work, in Portugal, I wanted to experiment different things. I wanted to go to a country where you could experiment different styles of architecture, learn a new language, learn a new style. And uh, it was kind of the best thing I did because even though I love Portugal, just the, um, the movement, just the act of moving countries really got me inspired. So I... Uh, a change of scenes. A like change of scenes. Trigger something it was in like your brain, right? moving to a, a, a different place. And that actually got me even more interested in art. I started doing more fantasy because as Germany you know... Germany is not very fantasia kind of It is actually. It actually is. Because the Brothers Grimm, my yeah, biggest true. source of inspiration is the Brothers Grimm. And they were German. And when you're in Germany, you can actually go to cities that look like a Disney movie. They look like a movie set. I went to a lot of cities in Germany, for example, Rothenburg, that looked exactly like the, the, the movie of Pinocchio. Wait, is the 
castle from Disney, the logo of Disney, yes, is in Germany? It's Germany. It's the, in Bavaria, right? It's in Bavaria. The castle of... There? I went there many times. Oh my I God, love I'm it so there. jealous. <laughs> I would love to see that one It's day. so amazing because the castle from Disney is actually called Neuschwanstein and it is... Hey guys, you're it like, it's Bavaria. also educational today. <laughs> yes, it's a party. It's all a party. So it was really interesting because that castle was actually done in a period that was called the Romanticism and the Romantic so period. So it was the 1600s? Uh, it was around the 1800s, okay, 1800s, later. 1900s, because even though it looks medieval, yes, Neuschwanstein, Janet, you need to go there. <laughs> It, uh, even though it looks medieval, it is not. It, it is like a revival. So most of the rooms in that castle are actually like a, a scene set. It's like staging. They did those rooms so that they look medieval. And uh, it's just a revival. We have similar things in Portugal, like the Centra Palace. A lot of things in that period were done to look either medieval, to look gothic, to look like the Baroque period, but they are just a scene set. And so I guess Germany is underestimated as a source of inspiration. It is, because <laughs> Germany is awesome. So many castles. So many castles, so many fantasy. People love fantasy Sending there. Sending hi to people from Germany. <laughs> Yay, hi to people from Germany. Janet is here. Janet She's from is Germany? here. She's from Germany. She's from Berlin. And she just wrote, wrote Neuschwanstein. Okay. Cool. <laughs> hey, Janet. <laughs> okay, so... Why did you move to New York? Then I moved to New York because I came here for the first time in 2017, uh, 2016 actually. That's when I met you, right. yay! <laughs> and we met in 2016. I had an art exhibit here and I fell in love with Expo? the city. It was Art Expo, Art Expo New York. I fell in love with the city. The city is amazing. It has so many opportunities, so many different art styles, so many different artists, so many exhibits, so many galleries. It's like an avalanche. So it, that's what made you like New York, the possibilities and differences of exactly. art you can experience here? It was that possibility. So it, it was, was much better than in Germany? It was different. It was, it was much different. I felt like Germany was amazing, but I felt but for like some period here, of your life. And for, this was an Step and, the, and this was the next step because I needed to come here to explore my artistic style and uh, since I'm very sensitive to inspiration and the environment around me I wanted to see what coming to New York would do to my artistic style. So did your style change? It did change, it did change. And you can even see by this uh, new series about it's robots, robots and aliens. And aliens. <laughs> I never thought that it's I would be doing that. It's not fairy tales anymore, that's what Humphrey it's, Jungle makes to Exactly, <laughs> that's what it makes to you. It makes your inspiration shift. And I remember a big friend of mine, he was Paul Neves, you guys should check him out. He's an amazing sculptor uh, 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 from Portugal. And I remember exactly him saying that he couldn't wait to see what New York would do to me. And it, <laughs> it completely changed. It completely changed my source of inspiration, my desire to so do things. So what's your things. inspiration in New York? Because it's like, there's no castles in here, there's, there's no, no pretty houses, there's it no is. It's small towns. I mean, there <laughs> is small towns, but they're not like European old small towns. It's, it's so what inspires you in New York? So what inspires me here is the push towards the future. It's like seeing what the future brings us. For example, aliens, ancient aliens, robotics, machines. I never <laughs> saw them, but I'm still waiting. I never saw a single alien. If you guys have, if you guys actually saw an alien, if please text us. Alien, please yeah. text us. I we would want to know. love we were, to know. We want to meet. <laughs> I would love to know the experience that you have. If you guys ever saw an alien, please text us. We're <laughs> waiting on you. We're absolutely waiting on you to know how your whole experience was. I never saw an alien and I never met anybody that ever saw an alien. Have you dreamed about being yes. abducted by aliens? And not being abducted. But actually, but I, even though I love aliens, I'm scared of them to death. Yeah, me too. 
I, I remember. I'm really curious, but I would be like, if I saw you before, I would run away. Oh my god. <laughs> if I, I can, because I know that they paralyze you and you cannot move. I would just die of heart attack. They wouldn't even even be able to examine me because I would just be dead. Seen one every morning. <laughs> you seen one every morning. Oh my God, Janet! You need to text me. Maybe it was you. Need, you. Maybe, yes, maybe it was me. I'm kind of because partially Because when I met you, alien. I was like, you look like an alien. Oh, you yeah. look absolutely creature out of this world. <laughs> I'm an alien. <laughs> yes, but I would love to know your experience, Janet. So please tell us, text us, and we'll share it. We'll, we'll absolutely share it. <laughs> so what city is your favorite out of all the big cities you've been to? New York, definitely. No New questions. York. No questions at all. That's why I you stayed here, that's, that's why, why I moved I, here. I moved here, I, like I remember since I was a child, I didn't even know what New York was. Oh, she says, I in the mirror. <laughs> Yay, in the mirror. You're the so alien, you are the Janet. Alien. You are the alien. I need to see a picture of you, Janet, to see how you look. <laughs> So even when I was a child, I remember that people would ask me, where do you want to live? Where do you want to no, stay? I didn't, oh, Alvaro is here. <laughs> hey, <Alvaro>. Alvaro. <laughs> so I remember that people would ask me, where do you want to live? I didn't even know what New York was. I had no idea what New York was. I never been here, had no images, nothing. But You've I was seen, always like saying New movies, York. Right? Yes, I, I had seen <clears throat> movies of New York, but I just wanted to move to New York so bad ever since I can remember, ever since I was a child. And uh, it's kind of a testament that your dreams actually do happen. So if you keep, uh, if you keep, keep inspired, dreaming. keep dreaming, do your vision board, do your vision board, put it in the board, what your goals are, what you want to achieve. Okay, do Tiago it. is a big on the vision, vision board. I'm really I'm big on vision, vision board. board. So I have a bunch of vision boards. I have several. I have several. I've always okay, had So how one. many things from your vision board came to true? Almost all of them. Really? Almost all of them. Damn, I it wanted, should, be, should be better in a vision board. You maybe. should be putting things on your vision board. I uh, often have to change things up because things keep happening. I have big exhibits that I wanted. I got them. Uh, cities that I wanted to visit. I got them. Christmas trees that I wanted. I got them. So Damn. it's always <laughs> things that you put in your vision board, they tend to happen. And it's not just because of magic that you put them in your vision board and then magic comes to the sky. Yeah, because because you subconsciously happen. keep working towards that. It's because them. you see it and you keep remembering every single day. Hi, Alvaro. Hey, Alvaro. <laughs> now Al on my stream. Yes, on Olya's oh, stream. Oh, <laughs> hearts. A lot of hearts. So it's because you keep remembering it, you keep thinking about it, and just that constant reminder actually makes you more motivated to go and achieve things. So I know um, you said already that you started painting kind of early, but when was the time when you actually started seriously painting? 23. You were I 23. was about 23 where I decided I am actually gonna paint because I started learning all of these techniques, basically the techniques that I use right now were techniques that I learned in art school and in high school. So I had really good teachers. It's the, it makes the, a world of difference. If your so teachers you went are to good. architect school, so when did you study the art? So I studied art before I studied architecture. And then that's a really important thing. I studied art for three years and it's a really important thing because uh, I remember that everybody was telling me you shouldn't start uh, study art. Every, Why? Because they, they said that you couldn't make a living of it. And that's absolutely nonsense. That's absolutely yeah, a lie. Yeah, because everybody has a vision of the poor struggling the, the artist. The poor struggling artist. And my again. mission in life is to, to get rid of that mentality and prove that you can be a very successful artist doing what you love the most. And uh, I think that I kind of am on that path of proving people that you should do exactly what you love. You should, if, you, if your love is baking cookies, open your baker shop. 
do whatever you love. I love this love. idea that you should be doing what you love in life. You should be doing be happy, what you love and don't listen, and don't listen to anybody else. Don't listen to anybody else because pe people, oh like, my cat, so <laughs> <laughs> my cat is right here. So people always, even your family will tell you that. You can't make a living doing what you love, but that's absolutely not true. Don't they, listen. They love Don't you. Don't listen to they anyone. They want the best for you, but you are the one who needs to make that decision. And you are the one who needs to pursue what you love. So actually, I listened to them, and I went to architecture school. And it's still I worked didn't work as out. An, an, an architect. I, I love so. it. I still love architecture, but it wasn't my true passion. My true passion so was always painting. Follow your passion, guys. Follow your passion because Speaking if you don't, passion, you'll be unhappy. What is your favorite painting of yours? My favorite painting? My, of yes, mine? Of yours, yes. Oh, of mine, it has to be the Frog Princess. That one is my absolute favorite because I did that so fast and it just worked out so well. How long and does it usually take you to finish the painting? So it's, painting depends on motivation. If I'm really motivated to finish a painting, I can do it in one week or even less. Oh, hi from Brazil. Oh, hey from Brazil. Como estás, amigo? How are you doing? Estás bem, amigo do Brasil? Eu falo português. <laughs> so yes, if I'm really Wait, motivated... Wait, what you say? Is this John Legend Brazilian? John Legend Brazilian. <laughs> oh, is that you? <laughs> are you John Legend from I know Brazil? John Legend. I met him. I worked she with him. Met so. him. She met him. She met him. She did a movie with them because Uyoka is really talented. But this and, is not about me, it's about you. And if you turn Netflix on, you Stop. will see her in every series. <laughs> that, that's what happens. Okay, I'm watching about, Netflix and all of a sudden Uyoka shows up. So watch a bunch of Netflix series and you'll see her. Oh, hi. Привет, <laughs> Vadik. Привет! Привет! Como estás? I actually have been learning a Russian Some song. Russian, say something Russian too. Uh, oh, Russian uvas yes halava. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have halava? <laughs> okay, let's go, back, let's go back to painting. Okay. So how long it takes you, depending so on motivation? It depends say. on motivation. If I'm really motivated, I can do it under a week. If I'm not as motivated, it can take up to three weeks. So it oh, always wow, depends. So it is, it is long because of the techniques. I was just showing you the painting that I'm working on right now. Oil, I paint in oil, and oil takes a long time to dry. So you need to wait on uh, layers. You need to wait on the layers to dry, and you need to kind of cooperate with the technique. So I've kind of come up with a series of shortcuts that you can use so that uh, it uh, dries faster. There are a bunch of things that you can do for it to dry faster. But usually a week is good. If I can do but it in under a week, that is good. <laughs> Yay! I've been learning a Russian song. Which one? <laughs> You have a Portuguese accent. <laughs> okay, so what's your favorite painting, which is not yours? Like, which is not mine, favorite. is The Birth of Venus by Botticelli. Oh, I love that painting but too. Because so if I had to choose one artist of all time, I would always choose Botticelli. And always. why is that? It's because I started getting my true passion for painting by looking at paintings of his, by looking at his paintings of Primavera. Of so the what did you like? Venus. Did you like technique or did you like the ideas in there? I loved his technique. I loved his themes. I loved his attention to detail. And most of all, I oh, loved um, the way that he painted the faces. My friend from Russia, faces. I'm sorry, he said that he knows the song you've been singing. I just didn't recognize oh, yeah. it. And he said that he's a very good friend singing this song, actually. Oh, really? That is amazing. You need so, to send the, the recording to us. Because I'm learning it. <laughs> I need to start learning that song. I'm going to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so back to Botticelli. Yes. You love the technique 
And what's your I love his the, technique. The birth of Venus is your favorite one. Right? The birth of Venus is my favorite because I love his compositions. I wo mm -hmm. love the way he uses color and the way that he manipulates facial features so that it suits his aesthetic. So he doesn't just paint what he sees. He sees something and he transforms it. And that's what I love the most about painting because you don't have to actually just paint what you see. You can see something, get inspired by it, and then let your brain manipulate it. And that's exactly what, uh, what I love the most that's about That's how Dalí did. Exactly. He sees something and manipulating it. And manipulating very, all of it. And strongly. actually, Botticelli was painting in a much more difficult technique because really? he was painting in tempera. And tempera, if you guys don't know, it's kind of the precessor to acrylic. So it was kind of mixing, uh, uh, mixing paints with egg yolk. And that actually dried pretty fast, so you had to be very exquisite at painting to make that. Uh, that oh, because blending. you don't have a chance to. You don't have a chance. You don't have a chance to keep blending things. You don't have a chance to to manipulate things. So you have to do it, and you have to do it quick. And that is what I admire the most: how he was able to achieve sh such beautiful shading with a technique that is kind of against you from the start. And I really appreciate that. Hello, Silva. Oh, Silva, how are you doing? Meika, how are you doing, Meika? So, um, have you ever tried to this technique, the Venture? I did try. I did try that technique. And you hated it? <laughs> I didn't like it at all. I didn't like it at all because... You want more time for I want more t I need process. more time. I need more time for the blending because the blending is what makes things pop. It's what makes things kind of grow out of the canvas. That is always what I want to achieve. I want to achieve the creatures that I paint to make them look like they are growing out of the canvas and kind of grabbing you, kind of doing this and <laughs> grabbing you. That's always what I want to achieve. Get that emotion with you. Get that just sense of deepness from the painting. And uh, with acrylic and with tempera, you kind of don't have much time to get that deep contrast, that color vibrancy that I particularly need. Of course, everybody is different, but I personally need that contrast and that color vibrancy to uh, achieve the end result that I want in my painting. So you kind of answered already the question, who is your favorite artist? Oh yeah, of course! <laughs> um, My favorite artist and is And what art style. styles you like? Oh, art styles. I'm really into surrealism. I'm really into surrealism. And so you like Dali? I like Dali a lot. I love Magritte. I okay. love all of the, uh, the surrealists. And uh, I've been really passionate about pop surrealism. Pop surrealism is where I identify as my style. It was kind of uh, a variation of surrealism where uh, it was kind of started by Mark Radin. Mark Radin kind of, he didn't develop the technique, but he enhanced on it and made it popular. So, uh, and uh, you have your favorite one, Nicoleta Cecoli. I mean, she I would say amazing. it's my absolute favorite one, but I just like her. She is amazing. And they kind of enhanced on this technique, is where you have uh, uh, a very uh, traditional style of painting, uh, inspired by the old masters, by the Baroque, the lighting, the shading. But then you have all the manipulation of these features, all the manipulation of the backgrounds, where you look at a painting and it looks almost as it was com coming out of a dream. And that is what I admire the most because it makes you feel such deep emotions that really you can't help but get a very strong feeling about it. And that is always what uh, uh, pushes me towards art, is the emotion, the feeling that you get when you are looking at it. So, uh, we met on the exhibit. At the exhibit. Uh, do you like <laughs> doing exhibits or it's too stressful for you? I love doing exhibits. I love doing exhibits and I have been doing many of them. And uh, I love communicating with people. I love connecting with people. I love seeing the reaction they have to art. And it's always a learning process. 
learning different perspectives, how people perceive you, because of course you create art and you perceive it in a certain way. But it's always good to see how other people perceive it. And you can get that on exhibitions because people have a different way. Everybody sees things in a different way. And if, if you can't collect the, the way that people look at things, then you kind of are limiting yourself. So always ask people, what do you feel when you look at this? And then you get a beautiful response that is always different from yours and from everybody else's. So you like getting a response from people or you like seeing artwork from other artists as well? Both. Both. I love seeing the reaction that people get from art and I love seeing different styles of art to analyze my own perception of it, to analyze how I feel towards it. And that also helps me when I'm creating art. Because, for example, I work at a piece, I, you know, I work at a piece, and that uh, develops a very strong emotion in me. And then I might want to do it in my own style, but recreate that same emotion in other people. So yeah, I was about to ask, do you get inspired by other artists and their ideas and their paintings? Absolutely. Have it ever happened to you that you saw some painting and you're like, I want to do this yes. particular one in my style? Many times, many so times. So did, did you do any? I, I did, I did, because remember when we were talking about Botticelli? Mm -hmm. I learned how to paint by copying him. So if you want to really learn a technique, and you want to really learn how people paint, it's always a great idea to select a beautiful painting that you love and do it. Mm -hmm. Because you learn a great deal by doing that. And now, even though I, uh, of course, I have my own ideas, my own way of thinking, but I still look at art and think, oh my God, I love this emotion. I love this color. I can incorporate this in my painting. But this is like a pieces of a painting. You get pieces. emotion or a color because I don't think any of your paintings are actually inspired by somebody's yes. painting. It's mostly what I call it the Frankenstein. I call my paintings kind of the Frankenstein because they are a mixture of many inspirations, a mixture of many different feelings that I grab here and there and then I put them all together in one. So it's kind of... Uh, uh, Victor Frankenstein putting his creature together. That's what I feel that I'm doing. Yay! What is this? Oh, in your life, pues volume. Oh, I don't know that. Oh, but I was thinking explain. maybe it's Portuguese. Yes, it's <laughs> Which language Portuguese. is that? <laughs> Which language is that? Oh my God, we need to <laughs> wave to all of these people. Keep waving, okay. keep waving. Hey, Sandrine, how are you doing, Sandrine? We're here doing this live, okay. but I am going to paint okay, today. A so please to wave to everyone. We need to wave to everybody. Janet, how are you doing, Janet? You are amazing, Sandrine. Hey, T. Kadimir, need to wave to all of these fabulous people. Yeah, we just don't want to like leaning back and yes, forth. Yes, because the, this is <laughs> because pretty it's far too away. Far for us, it's so we both pretty can far away. <laughs> so um, you guys don't see, but Tiago already has Christmas tree have set Christmas. up, and it's. I have Christmas. It's kind of late, it's the end of October. It's the end of October? Yeah, because... I <laughs> usually put it at the end of September. I think, but, I but think usually year, if you go to the store, um, you get Christmas decorations like in Bergdorf Goodman already, like end yes, of September. That is amazing. I love Bergdorf Goodman. Oh. You need to check it out. Yay! So, what is your passion for Christmas comes from? Oh, passion for Christmas comes from obsession, real obsession. <laughs> even if we need to show them the Christmas tree yes, we need we to show them show. the Christmas let's tree turn. let's just turn and oh show. and show it yay Chris I have two I have two Here's right here. here yay Christmas trees <laughs> the cat loves it see this is my Christmas tree I go crazy on Christmas I absolutely go crazy on Christmas, and uh, and it's actually uh, it's it's an obsession, and it started with my grandmother 
because my grandmother, I got that gene from her. She was completely obsessed with Christmas. She would do her Christmas. She would do her neighbor's Christmas. She would do you my Christmas. She would, she would decorate neighbors' houses? She would actually go to neighbors, bring a bunch of ornaments that she would get, and she would uh, uh, completely transform their houses. Like inside? Inside, she, so would, she would be like knocking on the doors, like knocking on I the have, doors. I have a passion. I need. I, have, I need. I need, I need to, to work on your it. House. No, what happened is that people, not you know, that not everybody. Nyoka is amazing at interviewing. Oh yeah, oh. the fabulous Nyoka, <laughs> fabulous <laughs> interviewing. You. What actually happened was that you know that not everybody are as passionate about Christmas, and it really bothered her. If she went to a house and the house was not Christmassy enough, and you're not my friend anymore. You're not my friend anymore. <laughs> and she would feel that urge to decorate her tree and to decorate people's trees and decorate people's nativity scenes. So if she went to a house and people had just like one string of lights and three balls, she would completely freak out <laughs> and would go to their houses with a bunch of ornaments and just completely cover just cover everything and i'm kind this of like that this is interesting ocd it is it's, it's very beneficial for your neighbors very beneficial for your like, neighbors you don't have to you don't have to you decorate, have to decorate. She, just do it for you. she would just do it and i'm kind of like that i need christmas and i, I need a christmas explosion I need my trees to scream at you. You I enter, mean, I wouldn't say it's you like enter, screaming, enter the house it's and the, and the, scree the tree kind of tries to grab you. <laughs> kind of what I try to do my with my paintings, I try to oh, do the same thing with my tree. New York City. Yeah, it's still New York City. So that's always, and I start Christmas really early, and my Christmas goes up until the end of March. So that's how I need that environment to get inspired. I need that kind of Christmas lights, that Christmas feeling, because I get way more inspired in Christmas. So I try to keep Christmas the whole year. There's always something, always something always, Christmas in my always, house. Always um, holiday. Always holiday. Always it's good mood. Always good mood. I love mood, Christmas always for the good mood. Like I get excited when it gets cold, when you get past the um, the time when the. Yeah. When the, the winter is coming, the summer is over, and so like you kind of like autumn, it's like nothing exciting, so you start looking forward to something exciting, and, and that's that Christmas. Beautiful feeling. <laughs> and I love all the decorations and everything I do that too. You have amazing decorations, yes, you have an um, amazing tree. There's a comment the paintings. Oh, the so paintings. People saw your paintings in the back and they love it. Oh, yeah, thank you so the much. The paintings are amazing, yeah. You can see, check the Chagos profile and you yes, will see all check my profile there. i have a bunch of things there i'm always by the way speaking of ornaments i think you have your art page tiago collections yes, tiago collections which does all all your paintings on the merchandise all right? my paintings on ornaments all my paintings on t-shirts all my paintings on bags all my paintings on pillows. Oh yeah, I have one. So there's always stuff. There's always I stuff. So you guys go. You have no. You have Nefertiti. Oh yeah, it's true. Because so. she looks a little bit more like you. Because uh, Lyoko always looks like my painting. So I try to get for her the ones that look a little bit more like her. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I am actually painting Olya right now. So the reason why I do this, the reason why I love these printed stuff so much is because you, 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 yes <laughs> my pillow it's because uh, you guys know that art is expensive and artists can't afford to do art for cheap because yeah, otherwise because it takes three weeks, it takes three weeks and uh, artists need to make a good living not just uh, go by they need to make a good living so you need to understand that art needs to be expensive in order for it to be appreciated and in order for artists to make a good living out of it so the the actually alternative that i found and that is really important for me for everybody to have a piece of art and have art in their homes and the way that I found around it is to create printed products. So yeah, you can the have. Yeah, prints are amazing. You can even have print, like a print out of the painting. Out of the paintings. You can have reproductions. You can have jiclays. You can have prints on canvases. You can have pillows. You can have all of that. And I always try to have the most amazing quality. And most of the times, you have the original painting, you have a reproduction, 
and you can't even see the difference. Even I... That doesn't even, mean don't buy original art though. Yes, it doesn't mean don't buy original art though. You can uh, surely buy original art because you are supporting artists, but if you can't afford it, there is which no reason which many people like, can't afford it. I love art, it. but I cannot afford to have original course, pieces. Have, so, um, I pick have, a original piece. I would pieces. go broke if I if I buy originals. Of course, I have all my walls covered with art. Exactly. So I have See at this great prints. this great example. You can absolutely have your house looking amazing with your favorite pieces of art by having good quality prints and there are there are many series of it you can get even get prints that are signed by the artist yeah and it's limited edition so limited it's archival editions. quality on like archival paper it will last you centuries it's it's a really good alternative so, so we stepped away from the christmas thing like um we talk about ornaments how many ornaments, ornaments do you have have thousands. I have thousands. <laughs> have just you just them? on this tree, I have 650 ornaments. No way. Yes. It doesn't look like Look it. at how hidden they are. They are even hidden inside the tree. So, but it doesn't look like overloaded. It and never looks I overloaded. I would guess because, maybe like a hundred on this tree. Because there is actually a technique to it. There is actually oh a technique. God, there's technique for everything. There's technique for everything. And I shared it on my vibe. If you guys want to look how to make these trees, I have it on my IGTV. Because with trees, there is actually a pretty specific technique. It's simple, but it makes a whole load of difference. You don't put ornaments on the tips because this way your tree would look overloaded and it would look like ornaments are just sitting on top. You start by pushing ornaments inside your tree. Get I didn't all know the, about it, but I always get, do that. Do that, because you can put like hundreds of, of ornaments and it will never look like too much. Because you put your least favorite ornaments right inside, push them inside the tree, push the tinsel inside the tree, and save the very tips for your favorite ornaments. Yeah, your trees look like the display in Bird of Goodwill. Yay! <laughs> because there's a technique to it. There's never Hello, enough ornaments. Anyway. Hey, Emmyway, how are you doing? So, you have two cats. I have two cats. And they're both white. Both Why white. is that? It's like an obsession of mine. I have a really obsession with uh, albino animals. I even painted a series on albino albino. Oh, I remember, remember your Remember the rabbit, the, yeah, the bunny. That bunny was actually inspired by this cat because this Angora cat actually looks more like a rabbit than she does <laughs> a cat. So I have, uh, because they look angelic. They look like some magical being coming from a fantasy tale. And so does actually, it come from your like life, or from your passion to Christmas and angels, or does it come from your passion for fairy tales? For fairy tales, definitely for fairy tales, because any albino animal or any uh, uh, white animal just we reminds really me good. of a <laughs> mystical, of a mystical creature, and that is why I. It's not. It's not intentional. But when I uh, see a really white animal that glows, I kind of get really excited. I get really excited. So of course, How did you my get tendency. Your first cat? My first cat was actually a present. Okay, it was so a you present. didn't mean to. I didn't mean to, but I was always obsessed. And her name is Raffaella because there are those candy from Your favorite Fer Ferrero candies. Rocher. <laughs> My favorite candies that are like. I'm not going to get blocked white. for advertising. Oh <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay. And her name is Raffaella because those candies are called Raffaellos. And they're so amazing, they're That's just so, so beautiful and so tasty. Okay, so what are you working on right now? So right now I'm working on a, a very different thing than, than what I am used to doing. So yeah, I can drop like a few tips for artists to get in galleries and to get gallery shows. So usually I know that the traditional artist will just go to galleries, knock on their hey guys, door, so tips and, ju Chicago. and just ask me, oh, can you represent me? And that's the complete opposite of what you should do. So what I'm working right now, I can just tell you, I'm working on an exhibit that features 
the past and the future, traditional art painting and technology. So it will have this visuals. This is very interesting. It is. I'm very excited with that. And I did a complete proposal and uh, already have requests to uh, exhibit in different places. Oh, thank you so much. So that's how you do it. It's exactly how I did my book. I didn't just go to publishers and say, please publish my manuscript. I completed a proposal, a finished book, and then sent it to them. This is exactly how it's going to look out. And then they decide whether they want to publish it or not. But they are not just working with uh, a concept, an uh, idea in the air. They are working with a finished product. And that's my tip to you guys, to your artists out there. Do a proposal for an exhibit. With select, a finished product. With right. a finished product, with visuals, with 3D visualizations, with simulations, with exactly how it's going to look out. And then select your favorite galleries and send it to them. And that's exactly how you get it. So that is my process right now. I'm selecting the best places where I want to have that exhibit that is basically already created. And that is kind of like what, what you need to do, create a finished product. That is always how I work, how I worked in all my exhibits. I created a finished product and then I present it to different places where I thought that my art would fit in. So do you have a date? I okay. still don't have a date because it's on the process of doing it and there are still many ideas on my head that okay. I need well, to get us out. Let yes, us know when of it's course. Out. Many ideas that I want to bring into the world and I've been having like this avalanche of inspiration and it's uh, sometimes That's what you Christmas need to do. Christmas in New York. Yes, Christmas, Christmas your inspiration. New York inspiration. is your inspiration. You get all the inspiration. And that's kind of the exercise. You have all this avalanche of ideas. And then think, how can I package it to present it to the world? That is the exercise. Because you can't just vomit ideas. You can't just go and then bah! <laughs> all over the ideas. You need to create a, a nice package so that people don't get all over the place so that they understand your concept. They don't get overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, exactly. Yeah, well, you kind of opened another secret. My question was plainly like what art artwork you're working on right now. Yes, like, what's exactly. Your theme? Because you did it's, the fairy tales. I did the fairy you tales. You did like Queen and Queens and, and what's your series? New now? York is uh, getting me much more towards the future and much more towards what art can represent to us as a race. For example, this is the idea that I have. If uh, aliens were to visit us in a hundred years or in two hundred years, Raphael. Wha oh, Raphael, my amazing cat, yay, what would we have to offer? what new perspective so kind of just creating beautiful things it's kind of creating a point of view kind of creating how do you want other beings to perceive us so it's more about creating a point of view than just creating pretty things and that is more what i have been leaning towards of more, more of uh, presenting my passion to the world, more of presenting my vision to the world, as opposed to just pre presenting my aesthetic concept. So it's more of what I've been leaning towards, just throwing emotions at you, <laughs> just getting emotions and throwing them at you through a visual point of view, because visuals can do that. Our eyes communicate with our brain and create emotion. So visuals can absolutely do that. You have the power at the tips of your hands. Okay, so do you have any idea what your future project is going to be? The future series, like after the aliens? They kind of come to me. They kind of come to me in dreams, in visions. So I am kind of having the idea of creatures. For example, like the alien, I think you can kind of see the alien right there above Lyoka's head. 
they kind of come to me instead. I'm doing these robotics right now, this future, but why not go a step further? Why not go towards the bionic? Oh, I was thinking like um, unknown existing creatures exactly. from another planet. From exactly. another planet. Why not uh, see where this whole genetic alterations, how we would look in a thousand years, how or you could do some chimeras, like yes. half woman, half snake, half, half, or whatever. Uh, not quite that, because that, that kind of creeps me out. <laughs> really? That kind of creeps me out a little bit. Those kind of two advanced uh, uh, manipulations creep me out. But what I really feel inspired to do is uh, kind of human evolution. Or alien evolution. Like a superhuman, how, how would we look be? like in two thousand years, or how would we look like in ten thousand years? Because we don't know what climate change is going to bring to us, and how we are going to, going to have to adapt, or if we even go to other planets, how our physical appearance will change. Will our eyes get bigger? Will our nose get smaller? Will our heads get bigger? Will our hands grow? How will our physique change to adapt to certain conditions? Because the human body is amazing. It's ever-changing. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing to witness. And that is kind of what the vision that I've been having. Okay, since my audience is a big part of it is fashion and Yay. beauty. I have a question <laughs> for you. What is your favorite makeup tip as an artist? Oh, makeup tip as an artist, because you guys know that I put a lot of makeup in my, uh, in my paintings, because I love the drama. I just love the drama. So my makeup tip would be, just go heavy. <laughs> Just go for it. Yeah, but which areas? <laughs> I would I would say contouring. If I would have to just do a makeup look on one of my paintings, I would go for contouring. Really sharp cheekbones, really sharp jaw lines. Just go heavy on it. Go for smoky it. Smoky eyes. No, smoky <laughs> eyes. Nobody will judge you. You are creating your own art in your face. You are the artist. So you don't need to be afraid of what people will think. Just go for it. If you want a really bold red lip, go for it. You want a really huge black eye, go for it. Really sharp contouring, go for it. I mean, nobody will judge you. You are the artist of your own life. You are expressing well, that's yourself. That's the perfect sentence to finish the life. Yeah. You are the artist of your own life. You are. You and create your own art. Yeah, we cannot do lives more than one hour. Otherwise, oh, we cannot save it's it. It's four hours. Really? It's four yes, hours? Four I was thinking hour. it's an hour. But yeah. anyway, we kind of went through the questions I've had for Yay. you. And we're finishing on a beautiful <laughs> sentence Be the artist of, of your, your own life. Own life. And thank you, Tiago. Of course, my dear. Oh, oh my God, no! <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for answering my questions and talking to people of and course. giving them advice. You guys are amazing. Thank you life. so much for being here. You guys are awesome. Keep coming. Keep coming to our lives. We have amazing. See things. you another time. See you. Bye. Bye. You guys